In a world where nothing makes sense, listen as Dre and Ron try to do just that. Welcome to Augmented Reality. Come on in, kick your feet up, grab a beer, let's get ready to talk. <laughs> let's go. What you do? What's good? It's it's a beautiful day in the I'm neighborhood. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm tripping already, though. How you going to start the episode grooming your beard, right? Like, come oh. on. That's what we can see. It. Hey, man. <laughs> well, we can't even get through the intro before you be a fan. <laughs> It ain't you know what I'm saying? Man. Let's go, man. I mean, what you got, man? <laughs> it's good news. We're recording two stuff. days in a row. So, obviously, yes. we have reached a verdict. You know what I'm saying? And it's a Maude Aubrey case. Um, let's kick the show off, man. Yes, sir. Well, you know, we got to start with a uh, grind of the gears. So, let's mm-hmm. get it. You know what really grinds my gears? You, America. Fuck you. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take a shot at the grind of the gears today, and uh, it's something that I hope will lead to another episode. Uh, <laughs> what really grinds my gears, right? Uh-huh. And like, you know, I'm not a big social media person, but I peruse it looking for topics and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Try to get feedback and things like that. And uh, uh-huh. I like Snapchat. That's that's it. Funny to me. Excuse my language. Yeah. But, you see, what grinds my gears is you see these young women and some not so young women posting these provocative pictures all over social media, and then a guy makes a, a, a illicit comment. I'm not even gonna say illicit, but he comments on what you posted, and the next thing you say is, "If you make any sexual comment to me, you getting blocked." Like I, I can look this way. I, I'm, it's showing again another of the double standards that we have in this country, right? And before I get hit up by all the feminist groups and things like that, I'm not saying that you're not allowed to show your body, express yourself. You know what I'm saying in your form, but you're doing it for attention, right? Now, I can see if the comments are grossly inappropriate. Yeah, fine. But if, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, if some dude just be like, damn, you look good. Like, you know what I'm saying, and, and comment on particular assets or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But like, see, <laughs> it's 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 not about, it's because I hear what you're saying. So, wait, if, let me just clarify what my grind and other gears is. Then you can speak. My grandmother gears is the double standard. It's not the blocking and all of that. It's the double standard of want your cake and eat it too type thing, right? Yeah, and, and I get what you're saying because if you put up pictures like that, obviously you want the attention without getting the attention. You Well, no, you want the attention without getting the mention. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, I got you. Yeah, I got so you. so it, and and it's crazy because if it's a dude that she likes, she not gonna block him. Bingo. You know what I'm saying. Bingo. So and and it's only gonna occur. She's only gonna block the dudes that she don't like because if they come in on strong, you know what I'm saying. Then she don't want that kind of attention. So it, yeah, I get your double standard. You know. <sighs> That, I think, I think you that's hit the, the nail same with the, on the head. What, and what, what you mean? What, you you hit it perfectly. Like as you start talking, I, it start coming to me. It, my whole clear point was that you want the attention, but you're directing it at certain individuals. And if that individual was to say the same comment that someone else said, that's not outwardly disrespectful, you'll be. All emojis and love, you know what I'm saying? Love, face, smile, all you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, oh my god, dude, come on, man, my camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right, yeah, that's that's shinier than the sticker. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm saying if it, it's the attention that you're trying to attract, then that's exactly where the double standard comes in that I'm talking about. Right. So, yeah. my in my opinion, if that's what you're aiming for, just shoot them in the DM. Don't put it out there for the world to see. 
You know what I'm saying? So, again. Yeah. And so it's just I'm, not this one instance. It's all double standards. I hate all double standards. For sure. Yeah, and I think we we well we talked about on the uh, last last episode, you know, in the grinding of the gears. It seems like our grinding of the gears here two episodes in a row have been about double standards. <laughs> you know, on both sides of the spectrum. You know, you have a dude with double standards and you have a female with double standards. I don't get it, you know, but it is what it is. If you don't want the attention, don't put your photos up there. You want the attention, you know what I'm saying? If you put your photos out there, that's why I don't understand about the Me Too movement. You know, you you exactly. want the attention. You dress provocative, and when you get the attention, and it's attention from someone you don't like, then it's bad. But if you get the attention from someone you do like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So go go ahead. Man. Again, like I said, like I said, this could be a whole episode because you brought up the me too, and I was about to go on the tangent for about an hour. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that, and we can come back and revisit that another day. Just just drop that in the notepad in the mental memory to come back and we can address that. For sure. And, and, and honestly, too. going back to the Me Too, I think council culture is slowly dying. I think it's slowly dying out. You notice that l- less and less celebrities and people are getting canceled now. They're trying to, but they're not canceling anybody anymore because people are finally starting to realize it's a overreaction. You know what I'm saying? To to go and and threaten someone's livelihood, it's an overreaction for how they feel. We live in America. You know what I'm saying? You and I live in America. We should. I feel like we should be able to say whatever we want to because it's our opinion. America yeah. is the land of the free. It. You know what I'm saying? We have the amendments. We have the Constitution that grants us the freedom to do these things. And people being attacked for their own opinions. And you know what I'm saying? And if you want to put your body out there, you shouldn't be able to be like, well, if you, well, no, she has every right to block someone, but who cares? You know what I'm saying? Don't comment about it. Just yeah, block. don't comment. I'm going to still be able to see your photos. I'm not commenting. <laughs> I hey, know that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and then, like, if you think about it, though, you said we live in America, right? Think about how many other countries where you could live, eat, despite all of our issues, everything that's going on, all the problems in America. There's not many other places that you could think of where you want to be, and you can be who you are, right? We have we we have a mutual friend, and I remember we talked about this. And what he brought up is that when you're born in America, you have won the lottery of life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You live in a country where you can feel how you want to feel, think how you want to think. You're not being force fed how you're supposed to think. We have won the lottery of life living in America. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not a good situation for black people or people of color because of the racism or whatever, whatever you think it is. But I wouldn't want to live in any other country. But it's what you make of it, right? Like, you, there's ways around it, right? There's opportunity. There's plenty of ways. There's things you can do to avoid it, to mediate the situations that you're in that will put you, you know what I'm saying? So, like, don't, that's what the freedom allows you, right? Yeah. Like, yeah and, and, and just to let people know, no one's fighting to get in China. No one's fighting to get in Russia. No one's fighting to get in Europe. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone is fighting to get into America. Some parts of Europe, but yeah. Yeah, but everyone's fighting to get in in America. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you won the lottery of life being born in the United States. Yeah, we aren't so united, but you've won the lottery. Exactly. So that's actually a perfect segue to get into the meat and potatoes of today's episode, man. Right? I'm a straight meat and potatoes, man. The American judicial system, right? Mm-hmm. Today, in the eyes of black people, it looks like we got a win 
you know, well, which are few and far in between. And we can't even just say we can't even just say in today in the eyes of black people, we need to rephrase that to today in the eyes of people of color. It's okay. a win. Yeah, I get you, that. you know what I'm saying? It's a win for yes. for those people, for us people. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <clears throat> I, I would first off, before, that, you, be, before you get into what mm-hmm. you're about to say, I would first like to applaud the 12 jurors and the, I think it was the alternative jurors, jurors uh, for their due diligence during this case. You know, it is extremely hard to be on a, on a high profile case like this and be able to determine, you know, without prejudice, you know, a verdict, you know what I'm saying? To determine without influence, a verdict, you know what I'm saying? So without I further ado, brother, because, I'm going to let you go ahead. Yeah, I just, I just want to second that because uh, there's going to be backlash either way you you know, either way you vote or you you come up with your verdict, there's going to be some form of backlash. The people, the, anything that comes with a decision, some people are going to like it and some people are not, right? If I was to tell you don't wear that Dodgers hat, you like your Dodgers hat. I might not, right? It's your decision. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just, you know, but again, I just want to second the applause. I bleed, for the I, I, I bleed the dyes of blue, baby. I bleed it. That's fine. That's fine. Isn't it? But let's get into this. So, I'm going to start by saying again, I told y'all yesterday that I have a court TV addiction. So, this trial, when it wasn't preempted by the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, I've watched about the same amount, 85, 95% of the coverage of this trial. And I text you early this morning because this was the beginning of day two of the deliberations. And I text you like a little concerned because the first thing they wanted to do this morning was look at the videotape again. Like they wanted to watch the short version of the videotape, which just showed the killing. And they wanted to show the, the enhanced version of the same part and hear the 911 tape of the father when he finally did call 911. And I, I called, I texted you. I'm like, dude, I'm a little concerned because they deliberated six hours yesterday and they didn't ask to read not one transcript, not nothing. So I'm like, did they go home? And there was a couple holdouts that were like, I need to see the tape again. And then I'm looking at it as like I was a juror, right? And so what I wanted to tell you was when I seen it again after they requested it to see it, I'm watching it this morning and I see a Mod Aubrey go around the, the right side of the back of the truck toward the front of the truck. And when you watch it in real motion, it looked like he just initially go around towards uh, Travis McMichael. Right. And I'm like, ooh, if they seeing it like that. ha. Huh, this could be bad, right? And then I heard analysts talk about, well, there's other ways that you could see it. They could want to be seeing if Travis McMichael actually did leave his initial position, which would make him the aggressor. Or they wanted to see what Greg McMichael's reaction was during the shooting, which I think that was the case. Since they wanted to hear his 911 tape, I think they were hung up on whether to get him on the first charge of malicious murder. So before we go any further, let's just say that <clears throat> Travis McMichael was convicted of all nine counts. Greg McMichael, the father, was convicted of eight out of nine. And William Roddy Bryant was convicted of six of nine. Right. All of them got convicted of uh, felony murder, some form of felony murder. So they all are going to do some extensive time in jail. Travis McMichael is going to get life. Um Greg McMichael will probably end up dying in prison as well, unless he gets an appeal to come up sooner than later. And Roddy, in my opinion, the third person that got it videotaped, it, he has the best chance of getting a lesser sentence and and on appeal, right? So I know you have something to say before I can go on, but go ahead. Right, so... <clears throat> 
you got you got long with it there. I think I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, so when we when we discussed when you text me this morning, I, in, if if you hear something in the background, I'm I'm at my parents' house for Thanksgiving. You know, I told them I was doing a podcast, but you know, hey, it's their house. <laughs> so anyway, um, when I think you text me this morning because we kind of talked about it briefly yesterday, and what happened was was the fact that. I think what they got hung up on was the fact that that third person, they was trying to figure out whether what counts they were actually going to charge him guilty with. I think when when it came to Travis McMichael, I think that it was a no brainer. He's guilty of all nine charges. When it came to Gregory McMichael, I think that's his name, Greg McMichael, right? So when it came to him, it was okay, we, we're not going to get him on malice because we can't prove that he had it in his heart to commit this murder. But everything else, yeah, he's he's guilty. So when it came to the William Bryan, it was, okay, we can't get him for malice, but we can get him for the, the, the felony murder be, for his truck being involved, and we can get him for felony murder for the shotgun and the handgun. And I think they went back and they looked, well, we can't get him for felony murder of that other truck because he was never in that other truck. You know what I'm saying? So, and then when you, I, I have to look and I have to kind of break down the aggravated assault. I don't really understand how they broke down the aggravated assault. You know, I think with with the truck, I know one was the truck, and then I don't know what the other one was. So were both the trucks both because there was only two yes. aggravated assault charges. They were for both individual trucks. Okay, uh, so the, it was like because of the the aggravated assault were for the trucks, to my understanding, and it was because they both used those trucks in a, a way that could have caused physical. Uh, serious physical injury to a monarch, right? Because okay. if, like, it, just to give a little background for people that haven't been following, when the trial first started, uh, the third guy who videotaped it, he was trying not to even be convicted, of, uh, uh, indicted, right? He was like, I have no role in this. But as the trial came out, when he joined this chase, he, he was, it, it was found that he, that 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 put him on the scene, right? But it found out that he admitted to running the Mod Arbery into a ditch, uh, and they hadn't released that there was a Mod Arbery's uh, palm print on the third guy Roddy Bryant's truck, and and his T-shirt fibers were on his truck. And in the body cam video, when uh of on the day of the incident, Roddy Bryant said he admitted to running him into the ditch. And he said, I don't, I wish I would have just hit him then. Or I don't even know why we chased him. That's what they all basically had said at some point, right? So it's like, the reason I feel that if this verdict had went the other way, dude, this might have been one of those times you might see me outside protest, right? Because I watched, I watched what went on. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna say I, I don't believe you. Um me myself, there was no way, even if this verdict went the other way, that I was gonna protest. Um it it makes no sense to burn down your community because of injustice. Because once the smoke I didn't say clears riot. it well okay, you didn't say riot, but you already know what's coming. If this would have been a not guilty verdict, you know what's coming. It would have been the riots. It would have been the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles all over again. Yeah. It would have been the Rodney well, King I mean, riots in Los Angeles. It doesn't make sense yes. to burn down your own community because once the once the smoke clears, who's left holding the bag? The taxpayers. Right. That's right. who's left holding the bag. Right. I, I mean, I. I still think I would have to ride for this one, dude. Watching this trial, like so many things came up that I was unaware of again because of the media coverage. And part of that is that they can't put everything out there ahead of trial, right? 
because that could poison the jury pool. So let me, so let me there ask had you this. to be something. Yes. Yeah, so, so let me ask you this. If you would have had to ride for this, are you going to fly down to Georgia or are you going to ride for this in, in Chicago? I didn't say ride. I said protest. No, no, no. Okay. I said ride. R-I-D-E. Oh, right. Oh, okay. I thought you said right. Mm. Uh, I think I would have went down to Georgia. I really do. I got I some vacation that. time. I would have went down to I, Georgia. I, I, I respect that. To, I would have been on the front line. Yeah. I, I respect that. And then I would have... And, and then if I did do something here in Chicago, if somebody asked me my opinion, you know what I was going to say. Yes, I thought it was an uh, unjust decision if it went the other way. But at the same time, we need to look at what's going on here at home. So if I did protest in Chicago, I would have put light on the issues that we have in our community here, not just with the police, but with ourselves, right? Like, which gives fuel to men like this. We can call them murderers now because they're convicted, which gives fuel to these murderers to come after our black men, right? Like, that's the thing. There was, I love the way the prosecution presented the case, right? Because everybody in the world knows that there was an undertone of racism in this case. And the prosecutor, she hit on it without hitting on it, right? She let the 911 tape speak for itself. And then she just used their words against him. Because you know what he said in the 911 tape when he finally called him? I got a black man running. That's it. Right? So the prosecutor, in my opinion, did a good job, great job, until the end, she even had a little faux pas <laughs> that was, was bad in her closing argument this morning because she kind of misstated the interpretation of the uh, of the law in uh, reasonable doubt, which everybody was on their case. and But the judge quickly dismissed that, was like, I will charge the jury with the exact law how they should interpret it, so don't worry about it. Just let's move on, right? But one thing I want to say before we go any further, and this coincides with what I'm talking about, the undertone of racism, and I was going to leave this for the Let Nas Down segment, but I'm just going to drop it right here. I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but she was uh, Greg McMichael's uh, attorney. It's a husband and wife duel. Yesterday in the closing arguments, she says, he had on um, baggy cargo shorts and no socks to cover his long, dirty toenails. Now, if that, now, when you first hear that, what does that tell you? That sounds like some undertone racial thing, right? And in the statement late last night that didn't air until most people had stopped watching the coverage, but you know me, I'm addicted. She tried to clean it up and said that there was evidence that they could not bring into the trial that says that having long, dirty toenails is an indication of a mental health issue. That the medical examiner told her that that could, that could indicate mental health issues. But she snuck it. So either way, she snuck that in because pre, pre-trial, they already discussed that whether he had a mental health condition or not had no relevance on the case of why these men were chasing him or not. Right. Like, but still it's just coming. Some things coming out of somebody's mouth just does not feel right. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's not what you intended, it's the sentiment behind the whole totality of the situation that's going to make everybody like they had, they have everybody was cringing when they were talking about that, right? Like, no one could gloss that over. Like, wow, did she just say that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what your thoughts are, but yeah, that she she let knives down. Because if you can't put that in, if you can't put his mental health into the into the trial, right? And nobody knows that that's what you're referring to, to me, that negates that argument and makes it look racial. I, I I agree with you. I agree with you 99%. Wait, no, fuck it. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I 
forget the wow. forget the semantics. Wow. You know, I I agree with you one hundred percent that that attorney, the defense attorney, messed up. You know what I'm saying? And she tried what she did. In, in my opinion, was she threw up a hail mary, and she's not Aaron Rodgers. The jury didn't come down with that catch, with that catch, you know. But it it is what it is. Um, honestly, man, I'm really just happy that justice was served. Justice was served. Um, the facts were told. The facts were shown, according to the video, and uh, justice was served. It leaves me wondering, though. Does William Bryan regret giving over that video? Because that so right there, been... that that right there has been like the key. Because if it wasn't for that video, there would have been it would have been their word against the dead man. You know, they they could have been like, man, he attacked me. But because that video, it was this was pretty much like. Oh, snap. No. Let me, so let me comment because I've been answering this question all day for people, right? And I'm going to say, yes, he probably regrets giving it over, right? But he probably, so he gave it over the first day, call himself being helpful, and he's thinking like, hey, I'm a good Samaritan. Here, I'm, I just happen to be videotaping it. That's how his initial narrative was. But if you watch the trial, there were other videos too. Right. There was like doorbell cameras and, and things like that that showed him leaving. That showed they didn't show the killing, but they showed parts of the pursuit. His which video would have, is the only one yeah. that showed the killing. As far as what was presented into evidence, yes. I believe so. But there might have been uh, some doorbell cam that they didn't put because it didn't show it as clear. Right. That they might have got it. I haven't heard anything about it, but everybody got a doorbell cam now, basically. And, the, and they were tugging. Like, let's just say this. Even if it was, the quality might have been bad and the angles might not have. If So when the third shot was fired, they were in somebody's driveway, right? So if you just see the struggle from that driveway angle, because Travis McMichael back would have been to that house's door, right? So if you would have just caught that struggle from that angle, even the beginning of that struggle, they get off. Right? Because it looks like Ahmad Arbery was attacking him from that angle. From that angle, that's what it would have looked like. Them wrestling over the gun, he got shot, case closed. And that's how they tried to play it off. Right? One thing yeah. that has been a, a constant question throughout the trial was should they all three been tried together? Right. And I've heard the legal analysts talk about it. It was a it was a tough case to try for the prosecution in this sense that they tried them together because if you put all of the evidence together, we get to the verdict we got today, right? If you try them separately and if the third guy doesn't want to take a deal and testify. It's hard to say that it's harder to prove why Amon Arby was at the truck at that point, right? So, but what made this case difficult is a Supreme Court ruling called the Vladir case. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, which basically states that if you have multiple defendants, co defendants, if one of them cannot say an attorney, or the person up there going to stand cannot say something that would indict another of their co-defendants and force them to have to testify, which will go against their Fifth Amendment uh, rights. So from the beginning of the trial, like that's why there was none of the initial body cam footage was put in, but they put took excerpts from the transcripts, right? And they had to be precise in which es excerpts they took because you... The defense could have been like, well, we need the totality of that excerpt, right? Which could have led to other things, which would have indicted the other ones, which would have went for a miss, which would have caused a mistrial because of the Supreme Court ruling back in the day. So 
I, that's why, again, I said the prosecutor did an amazing job trying all three of them at the same time. It was essentially three against one, right? Like, I know she has a that's team. Nice. She has yeah. the whole state's attorney's office behind her and everything. But when you're looking in that courtroom, when it's you, you're the lead attorney for the prosecution. It was three against one. Like, I would and, laugh every day. And, and it's, cra- and it's you crazy. You hear an ejection. Yeah, and it's crazy because Brian, William Bryan, attorney wanted it to be tried separately. He was like, man, we need to get away from these dudes. <laughs> these no. dudes going so, down. Here's the funny part, though. If you watch the whole case, he filed that motion for separation early on, before the case started. But he was like, let's just leave that there. Right? That was going to be his, that's what he thought was his ace in the hole, his get out of jail free card. And then he pushed for the motion later. Towards the right before opening our uh, closing arguments, he pushed for a separation of them too. Because at that point, he knew they was losing. Right? He's like, "Oh, let's sever the case. Let's sever the cases." We like all the evidence been put in now, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you want to sever ties? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think, it, I think in his mind, he was like, "The jury's going to be so overwhelmed by the actual, actual accident of Travis McMichael shooting Lamar Aubrey." And they might be passionate because he handed over this video and he technically is helping the prosecution. So maybe they'll just let him slide. But after Travis McMichael got on the stand, and it was over. It was over, dude. Like, I watched yeah, he, he, all of that. He pretty testimony. much dug his own grave. Oh, yeah. He, he pretty dug much all dug his own like, grave, yeah. I can't remember the exact amount, but after he got off the stand, it was like two other defense witnesses, and then they all in sequence. Like, I rest my case. I rest mine. I rest mine. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? And my, when I heard that, I'm like, they just working on their appeal cases now, right? And they just yep. hoping that the closing arguments is good enough. Yeah. You, yeah. Like, and, <laughs> you know, and, and it's crazy because even like right after, even right after the verdict, uh, about an hour later, maybe two, William Bryan's attorney was on the news. He was like, hey, yeah, we we going to file an appeal. And, you know, they were trying to ask him, like, well, you know, is there anything you could have done, you know, better? And, you know, basically his answer was like, yeah, hindsight is 20, 10, 20. You know, it's a little premature to ask me, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's something I could have done. <laughs> I'm sure there's something I could have done better. You know what I'm saying? So, but... I think that man, this this was pretty much in in my eyes. It was open and shut. You know, I'm I'm glad that the facts were seen. I'm glad that in the deep south, a jury of eleven, you know, white men and women, and one black man, were able to find see through the the stories and actually see the facts and. And, and get justice for Ahmaud Arbery. You know, I'm, it, it's 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 sad because one fa- you have three families involved here. You have one family who will never get their 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 family member back, and then you have you know two other families who are also losing you know family members. You know, but through visitation, they'll still be able to visit. And I'm I'm kind of curious as to why. And you know what? Now that I think about it, it's I think what they were more offended by in at in the reason why they pushed so hard is because they didn't get the response that they wanted from Ahmaud Arbery. When when Travis McMichael was testifying, he said that, you know, well, he didn't say anything to us. And that pisses white folks off more than anything. When they're confronting you about something and you don't say anything to him, it, it kind of takes their power away from him. You know what I'm saying? And, and he actually go ahead. He actually said during that part of the testimony, he was like, I, I, after I told him when I seen him the first time, because they caught him on camera a few times, and he and I flashed the lights and I called the cops. He just went in there and nonchalantly was looking around again. He was so bold, right? Like that, he was still butthurt over that. Oh, February yeah. 11th. Oh, for today. sure. For sure. Right. And, and, and that's and, and that's crazy, man, that 
something that has nothing to absolutely do with you. Even the owner of the property said, I've, no one has ever robbed the residents. Yeah, people had stole stuff, stuff off of his boat, but never out of the house. And even on the camera in, inside the house, you know, he just went in and looked around. You know, the, the property owner actually said, no, that, that wasn't the guy that I was calling about. You know what I'm saying? The guy that he was calling about was a guy with tattoos and, you know, he was a little bit bigger than them all. And I'm not saying that, oh, they should have known that. It was no way for them to know that. You know what I'm saying? Because from a distance, apparently we all look alike. And the property owner also said in part of his, because uh, uh, he didn't testify in person, he did the uh, deposition. Mm -hmm. And part of his deposition, he said, I really just wanted if the police were to finally catch him to tell him to stay out of there, stay out of there. Right. Yeah. He, he didn't, he never accused him of taking anything. He was like, I just don't want him in there. Keep it yeah. simple. And, what, and so and that's his, what think, came out. in. The, I think his exact words was, I want him removed. Right. Like, I just don't want yeah, him in yeah. there. Tell him, yeah. No, he said, tell him don't come back in here anymore. Yeah. And, and that's and, what the and prosecution that, was. And, and even the detective said that that's solely up to the property owner. That's not nice exactly. to, to, to get uh, trespassing charges and all that stuff. It's solely up to the property owner. You know, it's up, it's not up so, to anybody else. So, yeah. Part of part of their defense was this old archaic uh, law that was on the books in Georgia that has since been removed. The citizen's arrest, right? And the prosecutor, I'm telling you, she hit on this in the uh, when she was cross-examining Travis McMichael and in her closing. It's like you never announced to him that he was under arrest for anything, right? And then she was like, so we talked about all of your Coast Guard training and how you can apprehend people, and you learned about the Fifth Amendment, right? She's like, no one has to talk to you. Even if you were a police officer and you say, I want to question you, they have the right to remain silent. They don't have to answer anything to you. And he had to agree to that. At that point, I knew it was over, right? Like, the case should be over right here. And then it's like, like you said, I think he was upset that, hey, get over here. I want to talk to you. And he just kept going, right? Like, to me, man, this whole situation is sad. Could have been avoided. Uh, man, it's, it was so many points in that trial, dude, that just, it angered me. And... Um, offended me, and I learned a lot <laughs> at the same time, right? Like, man, I was, I'm just so, proud for the decision. So, just um, I had just a point to, that I was gonna make, and I forgot, of course. Okay, all right. So, just a clarification, um, because because we didn't go over what malice murder is. Uh, malice murder is when a person unlawfully. And with malice of forethought causes the death of another person. The decision to commit malice murder can't come in a split second or be planned long before, uh, which is what happened in this case. And which is why um, Greg McMichael and William Bryan weren't charged with mass murder. Um, so because they didn't, even though they were involved, they didn't directly cause the death of uh, Ahmaud Arbery. With the mass murder, malice murder conviction, it carries a sentence of life in prison with the possibility of parole, uh, life imprisonment without possibility of parole or the death penalty. Uh, in this case, the prosecution isn't seeking the death penalty. Um, so the, the felony, the felony murder. So we have one count. Uh, so that's what uh, life in prison uh, with the possibility of parole or life in prison without the possibility of parole or the death penalty. Uh, we have eliminated the death penalty because the prosecution isn't seeking the death penalty. Uh, felony murder. It occurs when someone commits a serious or inherently dangerous felony and someone else dies during the crime, even if that murder was not planned. Uh, the classic example is when two people rob a bank and the teller is shot dead, uh, even if only one person actually shot the teller, all those involved in the crime, even if unarmed, 
are considered equally guilty. Um, in Georgia, it's uh, either punished by life in prison with parole or without parole or the death penalty. And again, like I said, the prosecution isn't seeking uh, death, the death penalty. So um, all three, all three men were charged with felony murder. Um, think William Bryan was charged with three counts of felony murder. Uh, both George and Travis, or what was his name, Travis? Yes. Travis, Travis and Michael um, were both charged with all four counts of felony murder. Uh, the felony murder, you have the two trucks, and you have one shotgun and one handgun. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the aggravated yeah. assault uh, in Georgia is defined as being an assault with the intent to commit another crime, such as murder, robbery, or rape, and a weapon is used. It can be punished by one year in prison to a, up to a maximum of 20 years for each count. I believe it was only two counts each. Uh, William Bryan was only for one, I believe. He was only charged with one right, count of right. aggravated assault. Um, now, you have one count each of false imprisonment, with which all three of them were found guilty. You have a person who commits the offense of false imprisonment when he or she violates the personal liberty of another, illegal arrest, illegal arrest, confines, or detains such person without legal authority. False imprisonment is punished by one to 10 years in prison. Um, and then you have criminal attempt to commit a felony, which all three were charged with yeah they were all three were found guilty uh criminal attempt to commit a felony is it is a substantial effort to commit a specific felony crime it is punished by one year in prison or up to half of the maximum period of time for which he or she could have been sentenced if the crime was successful okay so all three were found guilty of the criminal attempt to commit a felony so, so go ahead. No, you, you uh, I had a couple closing points I wanted to make. Uh, and then as you're reading those charges, I don't know. Like generally in a lot of the cases I've watched, they only sentence on the main charge, right? And yeah. the, the rest sentences, they'll give a sentence sometime and they'll just run consecutively. But yeah. they usually just charge off of the main one and basically the other ones are there for backup. Uh, well, yeah. But yeah, go ahead with your statement and I had a couple I, closing points I want to make. I honestly see that all three men will be at least serving 30 years. Um, for a man of Greg McMichael's age and William Bryan's age, this could very well be life in prison. They could very well die um, in prison, you know, because they are older in age. But this is the cost that you, this is the this is the payment for not controlling your emotions. You know that probably Roddy, had, go ahead. I think Roddy Bryant should have took a plea deal. He he rolled the dice. Uh, he might appeal the case and he might get convicted of lesser charges like involuntary manslaughter or something like that and knock some years off. So I think, in my opinion, I think he's the only one with a chance. So out, right? I think he's the only one who had a chance. He could have took a plea right. deal in order to testify against the others, you know, but the, the other two was, was, was messed over either way. You know, they were going to jail either way. You know, my, my dad and I, we had this conversation and my dad honestly thought that William Bryan was going to get off. He thought that he was innocent. And, you know, I kept telling him like, no, he's just as much guilty in this as the other two. You know, it's, it's like in, like I read earlier about the bank robbery, you know, it's just like a bank. That if, if somebody breaks into your house, right? If someone breaks into my house and I happen to kill, you know, one of them in self-defense because you've broken into my house. I won't be charged with that. The and, and if the other two or if the other person is is caught, 
and he's charged and he's brought on trial, he will be convicted of murder. He will have a count of murder, even though he's not the one who shot, you know, because in, in that's, and that's just the way the law is, you know, so in, so in, I, go ahead. I, I got a question. How much of the trial did your dad watch? He probably watched snippets, be honest with you. You know, okay, it, he, because yeah, he, he he didn't seem um well versed. I'm not I'm not too sure. You know, uh, we didn't sit there and watch it together. You know, me myself, I'll be the first to admit I didn't watch much of the trial. You know, so it, it I mean, I don't have a lot of opinion other than what I've either read or the things that I've seen, you know, through me watching the court TV on YouTube. They don't have court TV. Like this morning, you you said that hey, the um I I woke up this morning and was like, do you guys have court TV? And they don't have it. You know what I'm saying? So they weren't able to see the same coverage that you were able to see. You know, so but I mean, I'm sure they followed it, but they didn't they didn't, I don't think I know anyone who followed it as much as you did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, but, like, yeah, that, the reason I ask is because if your dad watched uh, a majority of it, uh, <clears throat> like, even if he just watched the closer argument, when the prosecutor put out the point, there's this dog leg turn, right? Mm-hmm. That you can see, like, if you watch the video, Roddy Bryant drops his phone, right? And when he picks it up right before the killing, right? Because the video is longer than what we've seen in the media. And there's this, they've showed the pictures of it. There's this dog leg turn that Amar Arbery comes out at. And the reason that he was guilty is because if he would have stopped pursuing him before Arbery got to that turn, Amar Arbery had another escape route. And he would have been never funneled back toward uh, the McMichaels. You know what I'm saying? And the prosecutor stated that in her case. And it, like, because they were a street away. Like, the way the thing is, it's some crazy T-shaped area that they he was running in. Like, if you look at the diagram, he, like, ran up, ran back, ran west, ran back, far to east, came back, then went back up north. You know what I'm saying? It was like, if he would have never funneled him back toward that dog leg where they were sitting, he had another escape route, and we're not sitting here talking about anything. You know? But to like sum up what I was going to say, I had a f- couple points I wanted to get to. And it's like, to me, this scene, and I know we talked about this before, and I hate bringing it up, but seems like white privilege on display, full time, full, full display, right? And I'm going to tell you why. If you watch it, let's just start with him saying, hey, I just want to talk to him. Right. He feels that it is his privilege. This is my neighborhood. I know you're not from here. You right. are supposed to stop and talk to me because I told you to. <laughs> right. That's the first yeah. instance. And the second one is if you've watched the body cam footage, like I've watched these body cam footage that weren't allowed to be seen in court. You mean the body cam footage is for these officers after? Right after. Right after the shooting. Ahmad Arby's laying in the street with a sheet over him, and they're more concerned about the McMichaels than they are about this dead man. They, the, the one lady is like, oh, I know you've been through a light. She, she asked like four or five officers, do you got a bottle of water so he can have something to drink and rinse his face off? I got pictures. Can he at least wash his face now? Well, and I mean, something that I, came up. Go ahead. Something that came up is uh, they let the father take the truck away from the scene. They didn't even uh, impound the trucks. Neither truck was impounded. They didn't even photograph the truck where the incident happened. And one more point of white privilege that was seen on the body cam, the father started controlling the narrative of the situation as soon as the cops got on scene. They let him talk to random people. They didn't isolate him. They let him go over and talk to Travis and say, you ha- you did what you had to do. You did what you had to do. Then some random person come up like, we had to, he had to shoot him. 
So he's controlling the narrative. He gets on the phone and calls that congresswoman or whatever that he used to work for. And that's why they could, they didn't get arrested until May. This happened in February. So and they couldn't so, even bring that up in trial. So here here's here's what I think about that. Who called the police? Well, they were under the impression that the neighbor that started all of this was I if I, I'm petty, I would have went and charged him too. He's the one that help inform Greg McMichael and pointed, pointed Travis McMichael in the direction of where he initially was running. I would wonder if I could charge him too. But that's so, okay. just too but, but who called who called the who called the police? Because Greg McMichael at finally, one point right? finally he did call the police. So yes. usually when you call the police and mm-hmm. you say a oh, black man running and we're chasing him or whatever the case is and then it comes out what they're automatically going to think, okay, he was the aggressor, you know what I'm saying, or whatever the case. So what you have in that situation is you have essentially one side of the story being told. So Ahmaud Aubrey in that case is not able to tell his side of the story. They Now, I did hear that in one of the videos, it does show him taking his, like he's still breathing when, when the first police officer arrives on scene. So you know, that's what I was going to no, ask you. No did one you know that, aid. Yes, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, did you know that the first officer was on scene like less than a minute after the shooting? Yeah. Because I think the first neighbor had already called, and then they were he was already on the way. When that officer testified, he said he was in that little windy, twisty neighborhood looking for where the hell they were at when he heard the gunshot. He said he was driving like four miles, five miles an hour, trying to figure out where they were where this guy was running at and he heard the gunshot and he was on scene. Like he was a little upset himself. Like, man, if I could have got there sooner, you know, none of this might've happened. Right. So it's like, yeah, but, but but if he, so have you seen the body cam footage? I I, I I want you to just go watch. And I will, and I will, but I did watch the body, the office, the first officer on scene. I watched his body cam footage. I did watch his. You gotta watch the footage. female. Okay, watch I'll go the back and watch the body cam. I'll go back and watch her. Like, that really what, upset what think, me. Like she was more concerned with them. Well, I think that it's more of a familiarity. You, uh, yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I think it's more an issue of that. You know what I'm saying? She personally knows the McMichaels. You know what I'm saying? Because the dad he worked for the DA office at one time. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so you know yeah. he he had a piss he had a position in the government and he was he was probably well known in the community. So there was a. I okay. don't think that officer specifically knew him, but he was he was she knew he of kept him. throwing that out there too. Yeah, she knew yeah. of him, and, and usually and well, usually when when these and it's crazy because when these people they I'm such and such, you know I'm man, yep. you know it's and that's to what me, he did as a you say that to me, bro. I don't care who you are, bro. You're going to get the same treatment as Billy Joe down the street. You know what I'm saying? But in, in those situations, we don't know what her her thinking was. She was like, oh, man, this dude, if I don't do the right thing or if I don't cater to this dude, I'm going to get in trouble or I'm going to get reprimanded. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to necessarily get in trouble, but I can get reprimanded. You know what I'm saying? So what she was doing was she was, okay, yeah, I, I don't know what she said, but she kind of catered to him or whatever. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that it's right that they do this. But you know what I'm saying? Police officers do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Even when it's a man and woman situation, they will cater more to the woman than they will to the man, even if the woman is the aggressor. You know what I'm saying? They will kick the man out of the home before they kick anybody else, before even knowing the facts, before they even know what, what, what went down. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's... Yeah. I mean, and that was part of him. Yeah. Him announcing who he was and who he used to work for was part of him controlling the narrative on the Bingo. scene. Bingo. That was him you know controlling the narrative. And that's why. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah. man, I'm in a position Protecting of power. His son. Yeah, I'm in a position of power. You know, I've I've done yeah. this, I've done this. You know, he's sticking his chest out. He's that he's that what, what did the peacock do? The male peacock? He fluffs yeah. his feathers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yes, yes. I'm in control, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm the big dog around here. I don't care if you got the guns, you know what I'm saying? So, And they were allowed to take the truck away. 
So, but justice was served. What I think yes, needs to I happen agree. is those police officers that didn't act accordingly should be reprimanded. Should get days suspension, days off, whatever the case may be. I don't say fire them. No, don't fire them. But they need to be reprimanded. Yeah. I also wanted to say, like, and then my second point was, and I've said this numerous times, is that we have to change the perception of the black man that of the that the media portrays, that we portray, like that would alleviate some of this, in my opinion, dude. Like, I know it shouldn't have to go there, but if all I'm seeing is us killing each other all the time, I and and and, and that and black people aren't living in my neighborhood like that, and I'm not used to seeing that in my neighborhood, then yeah, if all I see is bad things on the news about them, when I see them in my neighborhood and hear bad things happening, I'm going to assume the worst. Right? Like, I don't know, man. I think that really just still needs to be addressed. We still got to clean up our house at home. So, man. so, so, let me ask you a question. This could lead to another podcast. Is the media responsible for the black man being extinct? Aha. Uh-huh. They are contributing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. All right, forget it. <laughs> we will leave it there. Just leave it there, because I'll go on for another hour. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Hey, yeah, boom. That's a good one. Is the media responsible boom. for the black man being extinct? Damn. <laughs> Drop the mic. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, but before we get out of here, man, <laughs> um, we got a new segment that we are introducing. We're going to call this segment Rapid fire. Rapid fire is where I ask a series a series of one word questions. And basically these one word questions, what do you think of when I say this word? What's the first thing that come to mind when I say this word? So this week we're gonna You mean one word answer. No. Right. What's the first I'm gonna say one word and you tell me the first thing you think of. The first thing okay, you so think like of. Word association. I, yeah, so it's like word association, right? So you know what I'm saying. So in, okay. in over time, it will evolve. You know what I'm saying. It will become something greater. Uh, but this is something that we are introducing to help the fans get to know us and uh, and, and all that other stuff, man. So <laughs> so Ron, whenever you ready, I'm a bro. Afraid. <laughs> whenever you I'm ready, a bro. Afraid. I'm afraid. All right, go for it. First one. What do you think of when I say marriage? No. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Chicago Bulls. Jordan. Life. Enjoy it. Okay. Family. Everything. Friendship. Family. All right. And the last one. <laughs> and the uh, last that, one. That was fine, wasn't it? I no, 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 no. It, hey, it's my game. <laughs> the last uh, one. Aaron Rodgers. You've been listening to Dre and Ron's Augmented Reality. Till next time. <laughs>